Hello, hello. I am back with a little rant episode about how to love being alone. And the reason I wanted to talk about it is because it's something I've been forced to learn recently, like in my early 20s, post-grad. I've lived alone for the past three years. I've worked remotely for the past two years, like no coworkers, by myself all the time. I've done three cross-country moves and I had to restart and I spent a lot of time alone during all those different periods and I feel like so many people do. And so I wanted to bring like my insights about how to deal with being alone and also how I've found almost accidentally that it can be a big superpower to be comfortable being alone because it allows you to find peace without having to depend on others for that peace. Have you ever met someone who they can't do anything unless someone's doing it with them? People like that never get anything done. Oh, you know what? I want to start working out, but I need a gym buddy. I really want to go to that restaurant, but I can't find anyone to go with me. I wanted to go to San Francisco. Couldn't find anyone to go with me. I went by myself. Being able to do that just gives you another option that other people might not see or might not realize is even an option. At the root of it all, I think it comes down to this question of what do you do when no one's telling you what to do? When you're not at work, when you're not sleeping, then who are you? And that question is kind of terrifying if you have no answer. And especially in this day and age where we all have our phones, we can binge watch Netflix whenever we want. I can scroll TikTok till my eyes fall out of my face and I don't have to face myself. I don't have to figure out how to entertain myself. I don't have to pick up a book. I don't have to pick up a hobby. But guess what? That's not deeply rewarding. That's not fun. That's not like the thrill of being human. Okay, my first tip. Suffering is pain plus resistance. So stop resisting. You can reduce your suffering by reducing your resistance to it. And what does that really mean? Except the moment. When I moved to a new city post-grad, it would be Friday night and I didn't have any plans. No one was asking me to hang out. I was just stuck in the house alone. And part of me wanted to be like, oh, I need to go outside and like find something to get into. And like, oh my God, I'm getting really cagey and all in my head. And after a certain point, I would just be like, oh, screw it. Like, you know what? I'm going to enjoy my night in. I get my movie. I remember I used to like go to the grocery store. I would get like a nice meal. I would take my time to like cook something. And I like loved it. A lot of times the uncomfortable part about being alone is how much you're resisting it. You're almost like adding a second dagger by not only being lonely, but also being pissed at yourself and being lonely and not wanting to be that way. Just accept the moment. And another key point of this is it's always a temporary moment. There's not one mood that you've had for your entire life that's never gone away. Like this stuff is transitory. So kind of just always knowing that can be kind of grounding because it's like even in my loneliest moment, like I woke up the next day and I realized that it was bright and sunny outside and I was okay again. Even if it goes on for multiple days, even if it goes on for multiple weeks, at some point this too shall pass. And another thing that'll always make me feel better is planning something else in the future. Maybe your Friday night you had nothing to do, but on Saturday you text your friend saying, hey, next Friday I found this thing I wanted to go to and maybe we could go. And that way you have something in the future so that you don't feel so helpless of being like, oh my God, I have no, I have nothing. No one invited me to do anything on Friday night and I'm just gonna wait and hopefully next Friday night is better. Like, no, you can plan in the future so that you can at least, if nothing else, have that to look forward to and you have more time to plan in advance instead of like asking people last minute. Number two, I felt like I already touched on this, but embrace the temporary nature of emotions. All emotions are temporary. Loneliness is temporary. It will pass. If you wanna rot and watch Netflix, just let yourself do that a little bit. I think we're so harsh on ourselves with like this hustle culture, self-improvement, like we always need to be doing something productive or I definitely feel that way. And to be clear, I spend a lot of my alone time like working on personal projects, but there's other times where it's late at night and I'm tired and I just wanna rot. And sometimes that's exactly what you need to do. Number three, everyone is focused on themselves and most people are so fucking wrapped up in their own lives and their own insecurities that they're not thinking about you. And I don't mean that disrespectfully. That's actually a good thing, okay? If you're out and you're bored, you're lonely and you go to the coffee shop and you sit by yourself, People aren't looking at you and be like, look at that loser sitting by themselves. Look at them having no friends. They're so worried about their hair. They're so worried about their day, their schedule. Like people are so self-obsessed, you wouldn't believe it. It's kind of nice, honestly, because then no one's looking at you the way that you think they are. And also since we're so con interconnected via social media, I feel like there's this illusion that like, oh, I didn't post anything on my story for Halloween. Like everyone knows that I wasn't out having fun at that cool party. People aren't thinking of you. I'm sorry, they're so busy worried about what they're posting on their story, right? Number five, be interested in something that's not talking and doom scrolling and binge watching. I wish I could make a whole separate video about this one or put this as like the first point in this video because how many people like 
do nothing outside of their work, what they eat, when they sleep, and like just getting through their lives. And then the rest of the time when they have a minute free, it's just doom scrolling and binge watching TV. Like that seems so sad to me. And we live in such a world that's full of so many cool, interesting things. I think people are tired of hearing it, but finding hobbies that you like is huge. Finding something that can be just yours, that's no one else's. Like, it can be simple. For me, it's making videos, making content. Like, I read books. Like, any of these things that just make you feel alive. It's like you care about what in the world outside of just what other people are forcing you to do. And the best thing about it is no one can take it from you. If you like knitting, guess what? You can knit for the rest of your life. People think of hobbies as like so short term and temporary. Like, oh, I'm, I'm just picking up painting for right now, but it can be a lifetime pursuit that is rewarding forever and is a place of comfort and solitude and like something to do anytime you're alone for the rest of your life. Like for example, I was listening to this podcast this guy was a marathon runner and he was like, yeah, I really loved running when I was younger. I would run all the time, do these crazy races. And now that I have a family, I have a wife and kids, you barely have any time alone. But his run during the day is the one time where he can really just be alone and work on himself. And it's his only, it's not his kids, it's not his wife's, it's his thing that he does that he likes that helps him connect with himself. Like that's such a valuable skill. Next tip, limit comparison. Obviously I'm gonna clock the number one culprit for this, social media. So many times where I'm like alone and bored, I'll be scrolling social media and I'm like looking through Instagram stories and it looks like everyone's lit and having a good time. Obviously we only see the highlights of like what people are doing and the people who don't post, we don't see what they're doing at all. The people who are going through hard times, we don't see what they're doing at all. And I think the comparison on social media is the thief of all joy. I promise you, everyone has time alone. They're just not posting it. The next one, which I feel like this one alone has single-handedly shaped so much of who I am as a person. And it's that when you're alone, you get the time to self-reflect. And I feel like this is a huge thing for me. Like so many times in our lives we're going through and we, we go through a lot of the similar problems twice. In your relationships, you have the same destructive habits or even you're stuck and you're stagnant on a goal and you wanna figure out like, how can you grow? How can you improve? And so many times we're caught up in the hustle and bustle of our day. We wake up, we run to work out, we run to work, we run to come home and have dinner and then meet the friends and then go home and everything just happened like this, this, this. You never had two seconds for all the dust to settle and for you to just really reflect. And I think it stops us from learning the lessons that we're getting along the way because we're not thinking about it. You don't put the patterns together. When I did this, I got this result. And then similarly, later when I did this, I got this result again. You know, maybe this is something I need to change. I do almost daily journaling and it just helps me like be in tune with myself. But if we were to just run through the day endlessly, we would forget about some of these nuances and we wouldn't be future planning. We wouldn't be thinking ahead. We would just be getting through each day and taking the time to reflect like allows you to course correct and it allows you to do future planning. And it's critical for me. Like if I don't get some time by myself, like I'm like, holy shit, like, I, I, can't, I can't even process these memories and put them away in the memory bank right now. And when you're with people, I'm always in the present and I'm never getting the chance to just think about the future, the past, make sure I'm on track with my goals, make sure I'm learning the things I need to learn. Do I need to change something? Those questions are hard to face. And then the last one, which if you unlock this level, you're a badass. We're talking about being alone in public to do things, getting out of the house. Now, let me tell you about some of my favorite things to do outside of the house, just in case you need like a menu of options, okay? Number one, coffee shop, easy. Claire, what do you do at the coffee shop? I edit YouTube videos, I journal, I bring books, I read the books. Let me tell you something. Have you ever had a book you really wanted to read on a topic that you were really interested in and you go to a cool coffee shop and you sit and you have a nice little cappuccino with the, with the latte art on it and then you read that book? for an hour, going shopping, going thrifting. You ever shopped with someone and they're always like, nah, I didn't find anything. They scan the whole store in two seconds and they're ready to go on the next thing. They, they're thrifting, they're like, nah, nothing here. And you're like, girl, I, I was putting my heavy duty gloves on to dig through this pile of shit just cause I think I see something at the bottom of it. Like sometimes you just need to go slower or other times it's the opposite. Like you're done and you're ready to move on to the next thing. Yeah, going thrifting alone, going shopping alone, art museums alone. Woo. Some of y'all not ready for that. I promise you art museums alone, especially if you're like me and you're interested in art, but you can go as slow or as fast as you want. Completely skip sections. You don't care about like get some headphones on. Oh my God. Like jazz music. I promise you that's a good way to spend some time. 
and you can read all the little plaques if you want to or skip them all if you want to. Oh, that's a good one. And then um, working out. I work out alone. I run alone. I lift alone. Like that's some of my best thinking time. No one's going to think you're weird if you're running by yourself. Everyone runs by themselves, you know? So yeah, those are some of my tips. And you know, life is all about contrast. The reason that being alone can be a way to recharge is because it's in contrast to being with people. And the reason why being with people can be so fun and enjoying and satisfying and fulfilling is because you know the pain of being alone. Like these things are like yin and yang to each other. Alone time allows you to miss people. And there's peace in knowing that you need both. And if you just sit with one for a little bit and you get more comfortable with it and you just stop resisting, you enjoy it more when you're in your social interactions. I think people who really, really need to be with someone all the time, like you're less likely to leave romantic relationships that hurt you. You're less likely to leave friendships that are destructive because the alternative is potentially being alone. And that, if that's really, really painful, then you do anything not to do it. It's dangerous to feel so scared of being by yourself and you can end up with the wrong people. If you can be comfortable being alone, even just for a short period of time, you are safe with yourself. And that's what's really important and empowering. So that's kind of my tea. Also, if you guys have tips on your experiences or thoughts that came to you while you were watching this, let me know in the comments. I would like love to discuss. And I'm sure other people maybe would like to read it if they clicked on this video in the first place. So, yep, that's all I have for today. Thank you guys. If you like this type of content, um, like and subscribe and leave a comment to me. I will reply to you and bye.